I want to uh, start off by saying thank you to the Typographics Conference for, for inviting me to speak. Um, Ellen and Sasha, just you know, thank you for bringing me here. And uh, to be completely honest, when I got the email from Sasha about speaking at the conference, I thought I was being scammed. <laughs> um, just knowing that my, my work generally finds itself in a broader creative direction and art, art, art direction sense. But as I started to think about what I wanted to, to speak about and how I wanted to shape my talk, I, I, I realized my relationship to graphic design has been a very complex journey. And it started in, um, in, my, in school. So you see here is just some, some very early work of mine as I was, I was starting out my, my career as a graphic designer. And one of the, the things that I immediately noticed when I started, started studying design was how out of place I felt within the program. And the, the information, the, the visual references, the, um, the curriculum and the material didn't resonate with me and it felt um, for, uh, foreign in a lot of ways to what I um, wanted to do and what I wanted to uh, create with my, my artistry. And contrast that with also studying black studies and finding myself in, in courses where the, the material and the information resonated, the, the cultural communities that, that we were studying and speaking through um, truly felt at home. And, and as I was going through my, going through my studies, I wanted to, to reconcile that difference that I found as I was you know, going from design classes and, and black studies classes. So a lot of my early work was how do I, you know, how do I bridge those two worlds and how do I create meaning in, in a design world where I felt, as, felt like an outsider. Um, so here's some early type explorations that I did as I was you know, beginning my career as a designer. And this was a, a, a typeface that we, my, myself and a buddy, Diego, designed for a musician named Zaki. His music um, was a Afro beat, Afro bass sound really sonically vibrant and really sonically bold. And we wanted to, to create uh, letters that had a lot of information and meaning embedded in, into them and, and wanted the, the typography and the letters to really speak to the vibrancy and the, and the, and the sonic um, aggression of, of his sound. And going back to the, the um, as I was studying black studies and graphic design, I was in, you know, often in, in my black studies courses and, and coming across information and, and you know, questioning why isn't this uh, a part of the design program? Why are we, you know, not examining something like Egyptian hieroglyphs as a design system and a design language? And I felt at odds with that. And part of that, uh, that thought process and that reconciliation was how do I create some typography inspired by these, these ancient hieroglyphs. <clears throat> and this is the, the sans version of the, the type um, called Kemet. And each character has its own individual meaning, but it you know, collectively form, forms a whole, uh, a whole body of work. And as part of this, this typography, it, it, it wasn't just about, in, in my perspective, type to exist as type, but I, I really wanted to to find ways to build community and, and um, use the, my design practice as a way to, to form and shape communities. You can see some more of the this is an examples of the, the letters taking shape. But ultimately, this turned into a, um, a clothing brand that I, that I formed. And, and what I really wanted to, to achieve is taking my, um, my design work and building and, and, and creating communities and translating these, these meanings that I was finding and, and mining from the cultural backgrounds and um, information that really resonated with me. And you can see this is some of the imagery from the, the, the clothing brand. So transitioning now, and as I was continuing my career as a, as a designer, one of the, the points of emphasis was how, you, how do I continue to build community through my design practice and knowing that 
as I was studying and, and, and my experiences as a graphic designer, I felt like an outsider and I felt like I wasn't fully a part of that community, but I, I wanted to use design to build community and, and, and continue to create bridges um, through, my, through my design work. And that takes, uh, takes us to Bantu Wax. So Bantu Wax is a, um, an African surf, surf brand, the only African surf brand of its kind, uh, a truly unique visual, um, uh, visual experience. If you've, if you've ever seen surfers in, in West Africa and, and how they surf, it's really incredible and, and amazing. And it's a, a, a very vibrant community. And when I was approached to create uh, some designs for the brand. I immediately uh, left at the idea just to, to be able to contribute to a brand and a community that, that, I, that I felt was really admirable. Um, so starting out in my design process, I was looking at uh, references across the African diaspora and, and looking for, for points of information that, that really resonated with me and, and things that I could that I could mine for my design aesthetic. And here's a look at uh, Bantu bra braids, which is what the, the, the name Bantu wax comes from, are these braid styles in Africa. And some more visual references. And ultimately, I, as I began exploring uh, Bantu wax and how I wanted the, the visual aesthetics to come together, I, I wanted to create these really graphic and vibrantly colored uh, designs. And the initial explorations were, were more just taking the, the shape and reference points of the traditional wax, print, wax prints and translating them into uh, graphics to, for the t-shirts. And then um, here's some more, more visual reference. This is in, in South Africa. These are the homes that are, are painted in these really incredible designs, really bold and vibrant. And I, I looked at these um, these bodies of work, and I, I was trying to find how could I bring typography into this? How could I take these, these references and start to, to bring in letters into this? So this was a design for, for Cape Town. You can see the, the Cape Town in here. But I, I wanted to, to take that initial reference of these really geometric and, and graphic shapes and start to, to introduce and bring in, in letter forms into, into the design. And here's a look at another design. This is uh, Bantu wax. This ultimately turned into a beach towel. But again, how do we take these geometric shapes, these visual reference points, and, and I was interested in how do I bring typography into this, and how do I um, take that reference point and, and form letters and embed that, that meaning and that initial visual reference point. And um, here's another design. This is uh, wax and um, a really kind of amazing story. When I, when I traveled to Senegal, I, I met uh, a lot of artists and creatives there. And I, I met a painter, and he was telling me about the, the brand Bantu Wax and how much he loved it. And when he found out that I designed this, um, this graphic, he felt so compelled. And he, he told me that this. Um, as soon as he saw this graphic, it, it, it really moved him to, to be a part of the community and be a part of Bantu Wax and that. And I was really humbled by that experience and to, to see how, how much my design could resonate with someone that was on another continent, had a completely different background as mine. And um, he saw a, a, a work of mine and, and, and felt so compelled to, um, to, to put it on and wear it. And uh, for me, that, that really speaks to th this notion and, and th this understanding when I think about my work is I would rather have a few people love my work versus a lot of people liking my work. And when, when, you know, when I approach my work, I understand that it's not for everyone and it's not meant to be and intended to be designs for everyone. And um, I, I love the idea of really referencing and, 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 and tapping into cultures and creating, creating designs and, and you know, having a, a point of view 
that is specific to a community and, and you know, the, the idea that, um, you know, reject homogeny in design where we can embrace all of the eccentricities and all of the diversity that is within the, the human experience and having that moment with this, this other artist and this other creative in, in Senegal really, um, really distilled that, that feeling where I'd rather design for a small community. Here's a look at the, the t-shirt on a very cool kid in New York City. This is not Senegal. <laughs> um, getting into some more work with, uh, with Bantu, um, going back to the, to the uh, original name of the brand, Bantu was inspired by these Bantu braids. And uh, some of the, all of the previous work that I was doing with this brand at the time was very geometric. It was very structured. It was, um, taking inspiration from those wax prints, and I wanted to start to, to break out of that form and, and design um, in a more organic and, and freeform way. You can start to see. I, I took these, these images and these references of the Bantu braids and began to play around with typography and how could I um, turn the braids into, into letters and, and type and begin to have more fun and and organic ways to, to translate the meaning and embed meaning for, for Bantu. So this was one iteration of the design, and I really liked the design. I, I thought it was interesting, and, and I you know, asked, what if I just remove the, you know, the form of the woman altogether? How could I create letters from what existed in these hairstyles where I was essentially collaging the information that I had available to, to create letter forms, and it formed this this look at Bantu wax. I really love how the, the process informed and ultimately decided what the, the final outcome would look like, where I had a set of parameters. I had the, the, the images of the hair, and I, I cut them up and started to, to piece the letter forms together. And you, you, you still see some of the initial references, but ultimately the, um, it forms its own, its own look and, and aesthetic. And here's um, the, the following set of images are, are from the, the lookbook collection launch for Bantu, and you can start to see how it all comes together and it forms um, this really, really beautiful and vibrant story of African Serb culture and Bantu wax. Um, all of the images in this were, were photographed in, in Dakar, and you can see how the culture is translated through design, but ultimately this experience and, and the, the vibrancy that is the, the surf culture in, um, in West Africa and Dakar specifically. So um, I'm going to transition into some, some more recent work. And again, as I approach any project and whenever I'm, I'm, I'm working on anything, uh, I'm always trying to uncover and how do I embed meaning into my design work. And uh, before I start any project, I usually ask, why does this need to exist? Does it have to exist? And if it, if it does, what, what would be the, the purpose for it to exist outside of just um, looking pretty? Um, so I was asked to commission a piece for um, ringing in the year 2021, which is a, a daunting task considering everything that happened in 2020. It didn't feel like a, a moment to celebrate or a moment to, um, to you know, to cheer in a, in a new year. Instead, it felt like um, a time to, to reflect and, you know, remind ourselves of everything that happened in 2020 and, and, and not to, um, just forget and, and move on. So ultimately, I approached the, the design of this in, in, the, in the, same, the same spirit and the same emotion that I was feeling uh, at the end of 2020 is I, I, I wanted to remind everyone to be reflective and to, to not take a, this moment as, a, as a necessarily a celebration, but a reminder that we, you know, we need to hold ourselves accountable to all of the, the actions that we, we spoke about politically in, in 2020 and 
that I wanted the design to reflect that. So it says, when tomorrow comes, will you keep yesterday's promise? And this is a case where I was asked to design whatever I wanted to, and it, it, it felt like I needed to, to design something that felt like it, there was a reason for it to exist. And the reason was to continue to ask ourselves that question. So transitioning into some of my editorial work, and what you see here is, are, are some spreads from Just Smile, which, um, like Ellen said, it's a publication that celebrates um, black and POC voices in fashion and culture. And when I was asked to, to design the magazine, I had no prior uh, editorial or magazine experience. I, um, for full transparency, I'm terrible at setting up and forming grids. But um, I, uh, again, it was a project that felt um, you know, completely in line with the type of work that I, I like to create and the community that I, I create my design for. So I said, yo, sure, let's you know, design a magazine. We'll figure it out. Um, and design the magazine. We're currently on our third issue. And as a result of this experience and kind of just jumping into this project, I um, was fortunate enough to work with the New York Times Magazine and uh, a publication that I respect widely and um, transitioning into Atmos Magazine, which was another publication that I uh, began to work with. And here's some of the, the images from the contributors of the, the magazine. And when I set out to, to redesign the publication, there was a, um, a modesty that I wanted to, to embed in, into the design. I wanted to ensure that the design complemented the imagery, but also was you know, quiet enough to, to make sure that these images really um, had place to, to showcase themselves. And again, going back to meaning, the, uh, the two filters that I wanted to run the, the publication design through was how do we embrace the, the natural elements and the natural aspects of the design, and how do we use design to reveal the meaning of the content of the, the story. So this is a story about the space between and um, uh, a space story, and I wanted the, the typography to reflect the, you know, the image of the stars and how do we start to to reveal and tease the, the content of the publication and the, the article through the, through the design. Here's some more of the spreads. This next one is uh, a story about uh, the, a river, the uh, river preservation. And, you know, we were talking through, talking about the design and how do we, you know, how do we bring our natural and narrative elements to this and said, what if we just, you know, break the grid and have the text form and, and flow into a river. And it, it felt like a really organic way to, to translate the story of, um, of this river. Here's some more of the, the spreads. This contribution is from a photographer, Josue Rives, about the, um, his indigenous community. And um, he had these really beautiful images and, and collaging elements that um, he would draw on top of the images, and he contributed poetry that we wanted to have the same, the same flowing or, and organic nature that, that existed in the drawings over his images. <clears throat> and another uh, aspect of Atmos was um, for each issue, there was a special specific font for, for the theme of the magazine. The theme of this issue was Beyond, and the, the font in the middle is the one that I chose, and Partially, I chose it because I was so um, bored with the, the other fonts in the, uh, the publication, so I wanted something that felt really, um, really, really aggressive and, and um, really ha had a lot of detail, and ultimately, this is some of the spreads that were using this font wired. Um, another element that ultimately didn't end up making the, the cut in the, in the magazine was uh, the, the natural elements. So this story was on um, the hijab and, and with Muslim women, and I had a Aicha Khan, a, a designer, illustrate these, these henna eyes and, and graphics that we would apply to the, uh, to the artwork. 
here's some more spreads from the publication. And ultimately, this is the full uh, breadth of the, the magazine and the publication. Again, wanting the design to um, hint at the, the content of the, the story, but allow the images and allow the, the information to, uh, to shine through. And yeah, that's my, uh, that's my talk. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, thank you.